Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today we we're talking about Unigine because Unigine 2.16 was just released. Now that sounds like a very minor release, but there's actually a lot in it. This is probably the only release we're going to see in 2022, and there is a ton of new functionality. So we're going to jump in and take a look at that. Now, obviously, Unigine has a reputation as being that Russian game engine since it was founded and started in Russia and is actively developed in Russia, even though they are now headquartered out of Luxembourg and have offices, you know, all around Europe. I'm going to try to stay away from the political aspects of things. This is a game development channel, we're going to talk about game development topics. So we can try to keep the politics out of the comments. I would definitely appreciate that. All right, so back to the release notes of Unigine 2.16. What do we have that's new here? Well, the biggest two new things are DirectX 12 and Vulkan renderers, both experimental and Vulkan is having a huge impact on it. So what we're going to see here is Vulkan can bump you up to 100 to 200% CPU and 30% GPU boost as compared to the OpenGL implementation. Uh, DirectX 12 doesn't offer as much, but up to 50 15 to 60% on the CPU side as compared to DirectX 11. So you can see here, CPU and GPU performance under OpenGL versus Vulkan, 118.2% increase. GPU, 29.9%. Uh, That's definitely impressive. Over here on the DirectX 11 side, you're not seeing as much of an example CPU um, basically uh, went up by 30%. Uh, GPU actually got worse from what I'm seeing here. Obviously, these are early on, uh, but you're going to also see some uh, platform results from this. So, you, you, you know, while DirectX 12 may not be that impressive, it does open up some new options we're going to see a little bit later on. So you can see some of the results here using their own internal benchmarking. Uh, your minimum frames per second is 47.6 down to up to 80. 8% average went from 61 up to 101 and max went from 84 up to 108. So in this particular case, uh, you're getting a huge boost if you're using the Vulkan renderer with DirectX 11. Uh, you're seeing a 0.3 uh, frame rate here, basically identical and basically identical. So not really a huge jump or change on the DirectX 12 side, uh, but the uh, Vulkan side is gigantic. Also, as I was mentioning earlier on, platform. So one of the big things about DirectX 12 is you need that for Xbox. So you see down here, uh, we're adding missing functionality, pushing for higher performance. The engine is being ported to game consoles. So that is one of the big things that was wrong uh, with the Unigine engine. It was on a very limited number of platforms. Now it is going to be coming to the Xbox Series X and S, as well as PlayStation 5 versions. Uh, and both are currently looking almost feature complete. So they're not here yet, but obviously that is where the DirectX 12 renderer came from. But if you're working on the desktop, uh, you're looking at a pretty massive jump in frameworks, 30, 40% more frames if you're using Vulkan over OpenGL. Another major part of the uh, 2.16 release here is the asset store. Now, this is being added experimentally at this point in time. I think I have it open already. Uh, so here you can see uh, the asset store. It's basically just their stuff for now. You can filter down by versions. Uh, by the way, there is a community version, which is kind of uh, the, their free edition here. And then they've got two other versions as well. You can filter down to things that are just available uh, for certain categories. This is their existing assets as it stands now. Uh, but in the future, they're going to be opening this up and they're going to also be uh, adding a commercial thing. So on the roadmap in November, uh, they will bring the users the ability to publish up free assets to the asset store and monetization for all users, in other words, the ability to make money off your assets, is expected by the end of the year. So this is coming very, very soon. Uh, definitely a nice thing there. So we also have a new SDK browser, a starting point to the world of Unigine. Uh, your project can take their first breath. It's full of templates, samples, demos, and more. They just kind of basically improved it, introducing uh, the 2.0 version um, it inherited all of the features of its process, but also gained improved safety, robustness, extended functionality, support additional features. Cherry on top, you can now minimize the SDK 2.0 browser to the system tray. Uh, you can think of this basically like their launcher. Everybody seems to have a launcher these days. Uh, a little bit less relevant to the world of game development and more on the engineering sim side of things, ROS integration or robot operating systems, unless you're doing oper um, that kind of stuff. Again, I'm going to kind of gloss over it because it's not really relevant to game development. Uh, the window manager got a revamp uh so uh, new features like node-based scripting, visual UI editor, sequencer, character animation editor, completely revamped window management and integrated workflow. Now that it's done, our next step is to create a functional and reliable GUI toolkit to simplify development of various ad um, advanced visual tools for a growing number of platforms. This one is probably the coolest new feature, at least from a uh, demonstrationable uh, effect. There is a new texture editor, uh, which allows you to work in, um, here, I'll show you. A video is worth a thousand words in this case, and I don't want to say a thousand things. 
All right, through the power of internet edits, that should work just fine. We'll go ahead and see it in action. So you see here, you can actually paint things in real time. So you see here, they're doing like uh, a weathered layer in the background and you can see immediately the result of that layer. Uh, so you do have the ability to actually draw and paint and make edits directly inside of Unigine instead of having to go uh, back and forth to your uh, DCC or content creation tool of choice. Uh, definitely a neat new feature there. Uh, you can see it also being used to do ambient occlusion maps and so on. So here you can see it being used to create lava. Another big thing that they did, this has always been in the uh, paid versions and this was a heavily requested feature in the free editions. Now you get double precision uh, coordinates. Now I did say this in the past that this gives you universe scale. That's wrong. It gives you solar system scale, but still it makes you able to create quite large uh, games in general. So it says uh, we made 64 bit double precision floating point coordinates available for everyone. Nothing stops you from creating highly detailed, virtually unlimited worlds with your community SDK edition. Maximum coordinate values are effectively 536,870,912 times bigger than for 32-bit precision. So whole solar system ending. So not universe scale, but solar system scale. Another area where they've changed things uh, is the sandworm tool is now the one and only way of creating terrain. I think this one is uh, a paid feature only. So uh, if you're using the freed version, don't be too excited about that. Uh, but the landscape tool, all of its functionality from it was moved into the sandworm tool. So they don't have two tools doing the same thing. Definitely a good consolidation there. Uh, support for Vargio XR hand tracking, uh, image generator improvements. Uh, it's just probably not something that you're going to use if you're working outside of the sim market. Now, if you're curious, there are full release notes available here. Go into a lot more detail. There are other aspects. Those are like the highlight features. Uh, but again, if you're interested in uh, much tighter details, you know, improvement things like uh, blur, depth of field, post-processing effects, uh, you can see in action right here, the effects on and off. So there is a lot more than what we actually discussed uh, just in the, the high level release notes. There is a lot in this particular release. Um, so if you wanna go through the full release notes, they are very detailed. They show you a lot of the changes that have happened in this engine. Now, again, we mentioned earlier on, there is an asset store right now. It is kind of a skeleton in, they said in November, again, that's when you're gonna be able to publish more free assets. And then you know, by the end of the year, you should be able to publicize um, assets that you actually get paid for, because it is a very sparse thing. I actually believe believe every engine should have an asset store, including open source engines such as Godot, commercial paid asset stores for people that do their packs, people like Cinti, etc., can publish their packs to every engine out there instead of just the big two. I think they all should have an asset store at this point in time, in my humble opinion. So it is good to see this, even if it is just experimental. And then of course we have the different versions. So if you're curious, uh, you can get the free version available. Uh, it's no royalty. It It is revenue limited. Uh, so available for commercial projects, revenue less than 100K in the last 12 months. Um, and you can't use it in those uh, fields. So if your revenue is greater than 100K, uh, you need to go up to the Community Pro, which is 150,000. And then they have the engineering and sim categories as well. So basically the free version is good for up to 100K. Now, the nice thing with the free version, again, is it now did get that uh, double precision coordinate system. So that is something people have definitely asked for. Uh, there are some assets that you're not going to get access to, but for the most part, those are kind of specific to these types of industries in general. So if you're not working with CAD and, and special information documents, that kind of stuff, you're probably not going to need uh, a lot of the stuff that's Missing. Unfortunately, a few of the editor tools are locked behind those tiers. And I hope they change that a bit, but definitely some nice stuff in this release. So this, um, the Vulcan renderer adding 30 plus percent frames per second. That's a pretty huge there. Again, we've got the console support coming soon. Uh, the new asset store in here. Uh, we've got the new texture editor where you can paint textures directly inside of the Unigine engine. Definitely some nice stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Unigine 2.16, the first release of 2020. And I'm guessing by the fact that it's October, the last release of 2020 as well. Uh, but there is a lot in this release. I, I, they're kind of underselling it by making it a 0 0.01 upgrade over the previous version. Uh, but let me know what you think think uh, of this release, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.